Hi guys, I'm Chetanis Murthy and I'm back with some watercolor tutorials for you guys. So today we are going to paint a rooster. So for today's tutorial, you guys will need paint brushes, palette, some fresh water, masking tape and a 300 GSM watercolor drawing sheet. So to start with, so as I had told you guys earlier in the previous video, first we will start with masking the corners of the drawing sheet. So now, the first thing we are going to do now is we are going to draw a rooster so that it will be easy for us to paint later. So now I have, I have a regular pencil, you can use a HB or a 2B pencil to draw. And uh, make sure you don't press so much on the sketching. First I will uh, get a small circle and uh, let me do the B. Okay. And, uh, As I told earlier, you guys don't need to press so much over the sketching part and uh, all your uh, reference lines will go off later once you start painting. I think our rooster is ready and uh, I won't be stressing so much on erasing lines and all. I'm just going to drop into painting it. So first thing I'm going to do now is I will give the rooster some water washes. So first thing I'm going to do now is uh, do the top and bottom skin part. So I'm giving the nice Skin, I'm going to put some nice crimson lake. Okay, so even in our previous painting, we had used crimson lake, and we are using crimson lake again. I think I choose such some sketches which have crimson lake. I don't know. Am I attracted to crimson lake? Crimson lake or something? I need to figure this out <laughs> because a lot of sketches which I've done, I and mean, a lot of watercolor painting which I've done, include crimson lake. So there might be some obsession over something like I don't know, I need to figure it out. So yeah, you can see here I'm not uh, going much out of boundary. So I'm trying to keep up within the boundary. And the water washes are not too dark. They are nice and I'd say less pigmented. Once we are done, I mean, if the watercolor flows and uh, goes into other areas in your basic washes, that's going to give a nice texture. So you can already see here how the yellow and crimson lake have blended well. And uh, I think I'll play around a little bit. So what I'll do now is, uh, okay, there's a little bit of yellow in the beak I will give some yellow here and I seriously won't uh, care about the spreading of color in the washes the basic washes and later we can do that so 
here our basic washes are done and I'm going to play around with some background colors so I'll do some minor washes around the rooster and even these braiding colors you don't have to worry again so let's have some fun uh, yeah I'll go with purple so whenever I say let's have some fun I usually tend to use purple I don't know probably even that is some sort of obsession for me I want a little more of fun in this, so I'll take some green and draw a bit at places. So for now this might look a little uh, haphazard or something, but later the colors will blend in well because uh, we are using the same brand colors and uh, they will all pigment well together, gel well together and they will give us a nice uh, blend. So now we'll wait for this to dry a little bit or you can use a hand dryer, handheld hair dryer to dry this up. So this will probably dry up in 2-3 uh, minutes so we'll wait for it. So let's get back uh, once this is done. Okay so our uh, background washes have started to dry. But then uh, I want to do some fun with the blending also so let's give our rooster some tints. Where I want So you can see The colors are blending by themselves and I'm not doing much I'm just dropping wherever I want the colors to go So now I'm going to wait for some time so that uh, the wash is drying and I can do the second layer. Okay, so it has dried quite well up and uh, you can see there are little burgers over here and this will all eventually go down because we are using a 300 GSM watercolor sheet so it will uh, have a nice absorption. And now I, I want you guys to know that it's not completely dried up yet so before it dries up I will add more colors to it, more tint so it's time to add some bright crimson lake to this you guys can see that it's spreading well and uh, the magic about watercolors is uh, it works differently with uh, different uh, what do I say paper quality and uh, the washes and the timing of your uh, painting I'd say so I quite uh, experiment with watercolors too much because uh, every time I do the same painting I get a very different outcome because of uh, I think the colors are doing the match really well and uh, I'll add some more blue here, Persian blue. And some blue here. It's always better if you use watercolors referring to a reference image. And uh, once you start doing, you will uh, understand colors better and uh, most of my viewers might say that 
it uh, differs very much my like uh, my paintings differ very much than the reference picture that's because uh, there's a lot of magic happening in watercolors and uh, there's so much to experiment and learn that uh, you tend to go outside the reference pic like adding colors and uh, doing different techniques add some sort of magic to the painting that you won't get it in uh, real image so now uh, let's go to the feathers and i'm going to do some dry brush techniques i'm not going to use a lot of water and uh, if you guys zoom in you will uh, that is called dry brush technique I don't know what others call it but I like calling it dry brush technique so wherever I want uh, So always remember when you are painting you don't really have to be perfectly close to the reference pic while working with watercolor.
both the colors tend to dimmen after uh, they have dried so i am going to add a little more pigment to the background for now it looks a little haphazard but once it dries and blends it's going to turn out well Okay, so it has dried completely now, and uh, we are good to do the finishing. So to do finishing, I am going to choose the thinnest brush again that I have, and uh, let's start with giving some blue here. the outcome here so now i'll uh, go with brown again i'll take darker shade of brown by taking very little water i'll darken wherever necessary and again you don't have to be very precise as it is watercolors and i'm just going to add few nice strokes here the next thing i'm going to do is I'm going to take some light brown since I'm going to add some extra water and I'll add some extra feathers here. Here you go. Now the last finishing touch I'm going to use blacks. I'm going to give some ragged texture here. And a few details in here too. And a bit of details here and there. To the background, I'm going to add the added bit of blue, I suppose. I'll add some nice portion blue. By the time the new paint dries, even the background will dry off and give us a nice cold background.
truth of detailing here too and miss this part Once this is dry, we can just pull off the masking tape and get a nice crisp, nice crisp, crisp. <laughs> we can get a nice crisp edge. Okay, so it's dried now, and uh, it's time to unmask the masking tape. And while unmasking, make sure that uh, you take it off in this angle so that the paper is not damaged. And here you can see we have got a nice edge there. Before I take this off, I'm going to sign this. And here we have our booster review.